All right, I think we can start. So uh, thank you everybody for attending the, this hopefully very informative uh, webinar. Uh, it's called Virtual Reality in Education. And the aim of this webinar is to give you an overview of uh, what is possible uh, in teaching with virtual reality already now, how uh, teachers are uh, practicing it in all kinds of various uh, subjects. And also give you an overview of what kind of content is out there available, where you can get more information about it, and uh, which platforms it can be found on. And um, just a quick uh, housekeeping. So my name is Mert. I'm the uh, product manager at PhotoClass. We ourselves as well develop uh, virtual reality content. And uh, the first speaker today will be Katrin Soika. She's the leading chemistry teacher in Estonia, I would say, and uh, has been using uh, we are in her chemistry lessons for quite a while now. So she'll uh, give an overview of the best practices and how she teaches chemistry using VR. Next one, we have Mikhail Gulbiki. He uh, has developed the Human Anatomy Puzzle VR app, which is one of our favorites in biology. And uh, he'll cover the, uh, what his app can do and how it's being used in biology lessons. And uh, Unfortunately, a third speaker had to cancel because of urgent family matters. So I hope everything is okay with Wim and that we can have him back here soon uh, because he's, uh, co uh, he's a co-founder of the Painting VR app, which if you have tried it, it's, uh, it's really delightful. It's basically your painting, but you're in virtual reality. Uh, yeah, and there's a lot of, uh, no, it's, it feels like the real thing basically with all the different brushes and colors and so on. And lastly, uh, I myself, um, We'll give an overview of uh, the educational VR apps that are available today. We actually have a, uh, a list on, the, on our website that we update every three months. So I'll, I'll give you an overview of what's there currently. There's 47 apps. So there are also links to the web stores where you can purchase them and so on, or just take a look. And some of them are free, of course. Um, so hopefully, yeah. So these will be the speakers. Um, Today, uh, everybody has up to 20 minutes. Uh, please type your questions in chat during uh, the talk. Uh, and after each uh, talk, we'll take a few questions and the rest of course can be addressed later. And we'll also share our contacts at the end of our uh, talks. And uh, I think that's it. So now I'll hand the floor over to Katrin and she can uh, uh, tell us about how she teaches chemistry using VR. Hello, it's nice to see you. I hope that Matt is going to give me the opportunity to, do, to share the screen. Yes, I'm uh, getting right on it. Somehow the two years in, uh, in lockdown still hasn't taught me. Probably you don't like the Zoom, you like other. Yes, it's true. Now I try. Uh, one second, you'll get it now. Mm -hmm. um, here you go. Now it, sh it should be good. disabled participant screen sharing. It's enabled now. Okay. And, oh, now, also now I there can, will be a video yes. recording available of this, so uh, so that you know. Okay. Thank you, Mert. Mm -hmm. uh, my name is Katrin Soika. I'm a chemistry teacher in Estonia, and uh, I teach uh, chemistry in Gustav Adolf Grammar School, but uh, I also uh, chemistry didactic in Tallinn University and uh, two years ago I got the opportunity to use VR uh, models and equ equipment in my lessons. At uh, first it was uh, a bit, I, I was a bit afraid because I didn't know how to use uh, or the question arose why should I use uh, these uh, VR um, models in my lessons uh, uh, there are um, all kinds of articles in the internet, but uh, there are a few articles about how to use uh, VR equipment uh, with a whole class where I have about uh, 36 students. But in my school, there are not very many VR <coughs> classes. We have only 11 Oculus uh, equipment and uh, the, um, yes, it, we can use only 11 Oculus uh, equipment uh, devices and uh, that was a really huge um, challenge for me because uh, I had question how I knew that uh, I should use because uh, in chemistry we um, try to teach so many abstract processes for students and it is very hard to visualize 
such chemical processes. And uh, sometimes we, we would like to do some experiments, but there are no uh, enough materials or the reactions are a bit dangerous. And um, as you know, if you learn chemistry, there are all kinds of um, formulas. We have to balance uh, uh, chemical reactions. And it is so abstract that students usually can't understand because the learning is uh, not, um, Hmm. the theme is not understandable for them. And uh, that's the reason I tried to investigate the VR environment and devices. <clears throat> and I also read that it uh, should help to avoid the student's chemistry anxiety, because uh, as a chemistry teacher, I know that some of my students hate chemistry, although I really hope that they would uh, dream about chemistry lessons that, and uh, they would like to come to my lessons. Uh, I also know that uh, there are some problems when we use uh, VR equipment in the lesson. Uh, for example, some of the students don't like VR uh, devices and uh, I felt that uh, probably there weren't uh, so many models that I had used in the first moment I got the opportunity. But uh, for the moment, uh, I have to say that I have uh, used uh, models quite often in uh, our secondary school. And uh, there is also a problem for a teacher that it is very really hard to um, make the first steps for using the VR uh, devices because uh, we, Probably there, there is not enough support uh, at school. And uh, some examples. Uh, at first, when I got the VR devices, I tried uh, them to use individually because we know if we play something, we can understand individually and it is uh, quite easy. But if we have only 11 uh, uh, VR um, devices, how to use them individually when we have uh, 36 students in the class. Uh, then uh, we try to think out uh, group work um, possibilities. Uh, and uh, it meant that we ha had to um, play the models by ourselves. Then we tried to make some worksheets and I also had some master students from the university who tried uh, the worksheets in their schools. And uh, we investigated together that it is very interesting to make up or build up a, a work a, a school lesson with a group work because students are going to communicate uh, and going to communicate in a quite, um, how to say, uh, Estonians are usually very quiet persons. But uh, when the students uh, put their VR classes, they, uh, they try to explain what is going on. And uh, the, uh, their speech was interesting. It was very interesting to listen. Oh, can you see the sulfur atom? And others had uh, some kind of worksheet. They had to find found, uh, the atom or uh, formula the student described and they communicated and it uh, I believe that it um, supported my lesson. Of course uh, there is an opportunity to use individually if you have enough uh, VR equipment but uh, you have to decide what's the aim of the lesson. Um, when you use individually students uh, can uh, move uh, in uh, they have a lot of autonomy. It means that I can give some hard model to those students who are a bit better in the chemistry and a bit easier models for them who don't know so many things about chemistry. And I have understand that it can help me when I try to Mm. Uh, give some extra knowledge to those who would like to know more uh, about chemistry. Uh, there are some examples soon as well. And uh, uh, 
before I go further, I would like to say that I really like Fuji Glass models, and because uh, their models uh, take uh, into account the curricula of Estonia, and uh, we, it means I and my master students have investigated uh, that uh, students can easily uh, play them and uh, they can easily understand what is going on over there. Uh, there here are some examples. Here are students. This is individual learning. And uh, those students said uh, to me in the lesson that, oh, I can't understand the, it was uh, chemical balancing. I can't understand how to balance the re reactions. And uh, they came after the lessons and tried to understand what's the reason, wh why they can't understand what is going on. And um, here is uh, one example from the group work. Actually, it is one pilot um, work uh, uh, because we wanted to understand uh, what uh, the we are give as the extra. For example, in um, uh, this uh, research, students uh, were separated into different groups. There are some groups who have uh, a person with a VR device, but uh, there are some groups uh, who doesn't have the person with VR device, that they have a computer where is a video about uh, the game that others are playing in the uh, real uh, VR devices. And it was very interesting uh, to see the first time how the group was uh, going to collaborate because uh, those who had the VR devices, they, ha they had to communicate to understand what is going on. Others had the worksheet in the computer, uh, but those who didn't have the VR devices, uh, they had the worksheet in the computer, they had the uh, film uh, from the game on the computer, and they didn't communicate. They just uh, um, said that, oh, you are going to take this part of the work, and you are going to take this part, and they tried to solve the worksheet by their own. And uh, this was one of their first uh, steps to investigate uh, we are in the group work for me. Um, here are paper-based worksheets. And uh, uh, we noticed that if we have too many ICT devices, same time in the classroom, there could be some misunderstandings. And uh, we tried to... Uh, we have tried uh, different ways for the group work as well. And here are the grammar school or um, higher um, upper secondary school students. And uh, as they are going to finish their learnings at school, I also asked, uh, what do you think, uh, uh, would you like to experience uh, such uh, learning in the future, or would you be interested that your children are going to learn in uh, that way? Those students said, yes, uh, they <clears throat> would have liked to uh, experience uh, such kind of learning by themselves at school as well, more. Okay, and uh, here uh, I have uh, 36 students and uh, we manage quite well, I believe. Actually, we also made a little research we made a little research uh, with the uh, teachers who have uh, used uh, such uh, chemical uh, models. And uh, we asked uh, how they use the VR devices. And the, they say that they try to use in the group work. Uh, unfortunately, I forgot that probably you don't understand Estonian, but uh, I can uh, translate. Here we say that we like to use VR devices as a group mm, work. And uh, here are uh, those examples that we use them individually in the chemistry lessons. Uh, unfortunately, at the moment in Estonia, there are not uh, too many VR devices uh, at schools. And uh, so I could say that uh, these are the first researches uh, how to use uh, Estonian. Uh, the um, uh, models in Estonian school, what are curricula based. And so there are not very many teachers who had answered the questions. 
Uh, but what are the, are the main problems? Um, teachers said that they would like to have uh, such uh, experience uh, when they have more uh, VR devices, and it is uh, quite time consuming because they have to make the worksheets and they don't know how and they have uh, they don't how, know very well how to use the equipment and that they would like to have some uh, extra person at school who would help them it is uh, these uh, numbers over here and uh, there are the main problems and uh, the main uh, how to say uh, the main idea is that we would like to have more equipment and we would like to have more time to use the VR in our lessons uh, uh, more and to use it uh, more effectively. Um, the other little research that uh, we had make is about the students' thoughts. And uh, it was so that the student uh, used VR devices and later they had to answer to the questionnaire where were questions about do, did you like chemistry the blue is uh, mm, said that i really liked uh, this uh, method and uh, uh, the next one is uh, did you understand what was going on yes i understood very well and uh, here are no these answers that they would say, I didn't understand anything. Uh, here was uh, one um, question about um, the difficulty, uh, but uh, the difficulty of the theme they learned at the moment. It's not only the we are equipment, uh, but also the chemistry side. And uh, it, was, it was about uh, salt naming um, and it came out that it wasn't very bad for them, but it was a bit uh, difficult, probably because of the chemistry. Uh, they said uh, that, uh, yes, uh, chemistry came more interesting than uh, it was uh, before. And they would like to use VR devices in the lesson uh, as well. And they also admitted that uh, they believe that other students learned from the lesson and they learned from the lesson. And here are also some diagrams about uh, student uh, knowledge tests. Uh, the green one is uh, their knowledge before we are um, lesson and the blue one is knowledge after the we are lesson. And as we can see, then when we try to measure the knowledge, although I know as a teacher that it is very hard to measure knowledge somehow, but we can see that they knew after the real lesson more than they knew before the real lesson. Mainly some of the students mm, had no differences. And here is also such a um, diagram. And uh, as we concluded with uh, our master students that we really liked the opportunity to investigate the VR devices and my students uh, are waiting for the lesson. So when I, the VR devices are in the box and uh, we, when we go with the boxes uh, into the classroom, they said, oh, we are going to use VR today. We are really waiting uh, for the experience. And uh, I like when the experience is a bit different every time. And uh, as a teacher, there is also a question, uh, should I give some kind of marks or how to make the conclusion from the lessons? I believe that uh, we should mix the experience uh, from VR equipment and uh, the real for example, practical work. And it would be one of the um, effective learning. Uh, um, I don't to say that it would be method, but um, like plan that at first we try to uh, understand uh, with VR, later we try to understand with the real world to cover the symbols and uh, the molecules to understand them better and uh, students have made uh, really good um, such conclusions with the uh, devices about the devices 
Uh, I took some time, but uh, I believe that my 20 minutes is over at the moment. Is it so? And I think you should uh, naturally wrap up, so we're, we're not in a crunch, but yeah, we're, we're getting there. But uh, I would uh, like to answer to your questions, if you, ha if you have any questions. Nobody has no questions. <clears throat> I have one. Um, okay. So if you had some um, graphs there, like showing uh, teachers, I'm sorry, students' knowledge before and after the class, mm -hmm. And for some of them, they were quite the same, and some of them had a big difference. What do you think made a difference uh, where the where they had learned more? Like, what was the where those uh, classes reason? different, or where those content different, or what happened there? Okay, uh, you know, Matt, the students are quite different. Uh, it means uh, if one student uh, understand very well uh, with one method, other uh, wouldn't understand so well. Uh, if you would a chemistry teacher, I would uh, say that there are different uh, topics as well. Some of uh, the topics are more easily understandable and others are uh, quite hard to understand. It means that uh, there is not enough to use uh, or to explain the topic uh, only one time, but the students are lazy as well. And uh, if you see, uh, sometimes if uh, we say that we would like to investigate you and uh, give some test, uh, uh, students uh, maybe just don't want to fill the test uh, properly. properly. It means uh, that they think, oh, why should I uh, fill the test? What's the reason I should fill the test? Mm -hmm. There are so many um, ex explanations why the um, differences were, di uh, were not similar. Mm -hmm. Okay. Makes sense. I think Pavel was the next one who had a question. I see your hand there. Yes. Hi. Hi, I would like to ask, uh, what is your uh, like experience about uh, uh, students' participation using the virtual reality? Because I, I have my experience that some are hesitating like to even try and put it uh, uh, on the head, the VR set. Okay, Pavel, but uh, how to use them? Do you use the, uh, should students use them individually or in the group? Uh, it was like uh, like individually. I just like uh, at least offer them like let's go and try it, and they were like hesitating, like no, no, I don't want to really try it. Like uh, someone someone else can try it. Yes, actually, I have had such uh, experiences. But if uh, we work as a group, uh, we can um, make a different group works. Uh, my group works are, are usually usually so that. Uh, also, it depends if we have virus or not. If we don't have a virus, uh, we have to learn. we don't have to uh, help the distance. Uh, then I ask students uh, to change the VR equipment uh, in the group. For example, we have uh, three or four persons. One of them have had at first the VR devices, and others are writing to the paper and ask from he, him or her. Uh, then um, I say that you should change the VR equipment after some time, and that they are going to change. But same time, they are learning because if they have the worksheet, there are the questions, and they have to think all of the time about the problem. And uh, I know that uh, there are some uh, students who said, I have tried the VR devices, but my, but my head is going to ache or something like or dizzying or uh, what else. And uh, then I said, oh, yes, you don't have to use them. But if we learn in the group, then he or she is also involved into the work because they create the, the knowledge together. And that's why I like the group work. But I have also uh, understand that sometimes they are just a bit afraid of the, the device. And when they see that other three from the group use easily the VR device, then uh, they would like to try it. Uh, I, they said, oh, for a moment, I take them. And uh, sometimes uh, they would like to use them later, but uh, not all of the students. Did I answer? Yeah, yeah thank you. Okay, two more quick questions, then we can move on. Uh, so Mariana is asking, how much time did you spend uh, uh, to set each lesson with VR? You mean like uh, for preparation, right? To set it up. 
okay, Mariana, uh, for the preparation, it, it depends. Uh, uh, for example, when I go to new new, uh, new game or model or how to say or app, uh, then I try to play it myself. And uh, then uh, I try to think how to use. Probably uh, when I take the first time some kind of game, it would take about three or five hours to make a worksheet. But uh, later, if uh, you take the um, model from the same developer, uh, they are usually uh, quite similar somehow, and it is easier to move um, in the game or in the app, and it would be easier. And if you have the first experience how to use, the second is a bit easier, the third is more and the fifth is much more easier. And you have this blank worksheet as well. And the worksheets can be probably shared as well, right? Oh, yes, but you really. should try them at first. The most yeah. important thing that you should understand what is going on and you should understand why should I use the we are equipment. Mm -hmm. But yeah, also there is a technologist, I think in your school that does the maintenance uh, which maybe was the question about as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for the academic uh, side, that was the answer. Okay, last question, Eric. Uh, Eric asked, where do you see most benefit of using VR? Like, does it have more like a novelty value or is there some uh, major benefits of improved understanding of the principles over a longer term uh, duration? Yes. As I said, I have used them uh, two years. Uh, I believe that we should use them uh, a bit longer to give uh, better explanations, but I believe that uh, the mm, most, uh, the, the main benefit is that I can uh, show the molecules. I can't show the molecules in the test tube, for example. I can uh, put them uh, together as a Lego, but uh, I can't uh, manipulate with the molecules. And I like that I can make abstract uh, think thinking uh, processes more visible. And I, be, I, I know it is uh, very important. Of course, there is a question. Uh, are there some misunderstandings when they can take the molecules into the hand, but uh, we haven't uh, uh, res uh, investigated that at the moment. Great, thank you very much, Katrin. Uh, it seems our format is uh, 20 minutes talk, 10 minutes questions. Hopefully that's okay as we have one less uh, speaker today. Uh, okay, so next um, uh, we are moving on to Mikal, and he will talk about uh, the anatomy uh, side of things. Yeah. And you should have the ability to share screen. Let me know if, if you can see my screen all right. Yes, we can. Uh, right, so uh, hello everyone. This is Michał uh, from Poland, and I, I have been invited to this uh, webinar to just talk a little bit about this uh, application that, that I have developed. It's a pretty simple application, so I, I won't take too much of your time. Um, and uh, basically, the other aspect is how to use this application uh, for educational purposes. So I will try to cover this as well. Uh, but before uh, going to the application uh, by itself, I would like to uh, share my some kind of personal insight, insight why I consider uh, virtual reality as a game changer uh, for educational, especially educational personal uh, purposes, but not, not only. Um, I think that at this moment, there is no other tool on the market uh, which can deliver such level of immersion. Uh, um, you know, having the ability to, to see the object from the different angles, with the different uh, lighting conditions, uh, with the different different uh, reflections, and the most important is uh, having the ability to feel the scale of the object. It is something what VR uh, gives us, and there is no other tool which can address this from my perspective, right? So that's, that's why I consider this as a, a very valuable tool. I was personally very surprised after you know spending some kind of uh, VR theater while watching uh, Netflix and with this spacious, uh, very luxury room, uh, with the beautiful fireplace, beautiful view from from the window. Um, how quick my brain got used to this uh, absolutely different environment, 
and say taking off and going back to the, to my you know uh, far away from this lecture room was was deep shock for me and personally I wanted to go back uh, as fast as possible to do this VR world. So this is uh, this is basically how uh, our brain is uh, how easy it is to to cheat our brain um, in VR and uh, how and what is uh, also the important aspect is that it's it's not easy uh, to realize the scale of the object even having the video or pictures even you have even if you have next to the object have you well known object with the scale still your brain is not able to to uh, comprehend what is the real scale of the object but in vr reality uh, all these problems are addressed right so another uh, uh, very impo important aspect for me <clears throat> when it comes to virtual reality and, and learning <clears throat> is isolation right so right now there is a lot of noise information noise around us um, you know, thousands of, of um, uh, posts, messages, you know, from the different different uh, sources. And if you go to into VR reality world, you are absolutely cut off from this, and you can focus on the single task. And this I consider also as uh, something. I have also problem with focus in my in the daily daily base work to just do something for 30 minutes and not being disturbed by any other other aspects and other stuff. And in VR reality, it's 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 very easy. To just spend 30 minutes and and doing just just one uh, task, and uh, last one, but uh, uh, very important aspect is gamification, right? So to make to make the the learning much more appealing, much more involving for for students, to not convince them by I don't know uh, exam stuff or but uh, but by just make, making this much more appealing, and uh, VR VR gives you a possibility to interact with objects, to implement the physics behind the objects, right? So um, uh, give you a possibility to to implement some complex logic to, for example, check some procedure. You can learn how to do some procedure, some complex procedure when it comes to medical stuff and so on so this is what vr uh, gives you it, it makes much more appealing much more attractive such experience and there is no bias and um, there is no cheating inside because algorithm algorithm is relentless to to assess uh, if uh, uh, the procedure that you executed has been executed properly right so now um, it is uh, just about my personal thoughts about uh, about vr uh, now, what is uh, human anatomy puzzles? Um, basically, it's a classic, very simple um, a jigsaw jigsaw game. Uh, I have made this game because um, uh, I was looking for something like this, and uh, there were no something uh, that I was looking for. So cheap, easy to use, available on mobile devices like in you know, Oculus Quest and so on, without the connection to the powerful PC and so on. So I realized that there is nothing such such, such uh, like tech stuff on the market. So I have decided to just do this. So what we have, uh, so what we have the four modes, skeleton, internal organs, upper uh, layer muscles and school. I will go very quickly through the all uh, options available, uh, if you don't mind. So how it look, looks in practice. Uh, so basically, um, there is just a uh, 50 bones, uh, but it's a uh, really easy to to extend to to uh, to have much more. So there are a few difficulty levels. Uh, it's uh, limited by time. Uh, so the the difficulty levels depends. Uh, uh, these hints you see this this yellow um, and green hint, uh, uh, yellow hints depends also also on on the uh, on the difficulty level. And basically, it's a pretty nice experience, and and uh, we can learn a lot about the. Uh, about how you know the bones are connected to each other and so on, and feeling the scale, as I said uh, previously, it is something uh, precious. Right. So the next one, just to to not spend too much on on the single one. Right. So in case of uh, extending this uh, this skeleton this skeleton uh, level, no problem. We can add much more uh, much more bones to to assemble. We, ha we can have a feet feet bones, hand bones. Not even mentioning about the uh, about the uh, spine disc or, or uh, particular ribs, right? So another level, uh, muscles, upper level muscles. And this is pretty controversial. Um, why? Because, uh, okay. uh, because uh, uh, I have received, there is one more than 100 uh, separated muscles to, to assemble. Oh, this is uh, pretty important that you can, before the starting the level, you can go around the object and to check uh, what is your goal. Right, so what do we have to assemble? 
and I have received feedback from community that it's almost impossible to to uh, to assemble in the time frame. There is 20 minutes. Uh, no one uh, uh, at this moment, based on stats, uh, already managed to do this. And it is just an upper level of muscles, right? But uh, um, and basically, uh, even though that it's it's pretty difficult to to assemble all of this of the stuff, uh, there is still a lot of object that we can uh, extract and expose as a separated separated level like you know the face muscles and so on right uh, let's go to the next one um internal organ or, organs right so it could be potentially very good level at this moment the models are pretty simple it's um you can see on, on the video um uh, are pretty simple, simple because of uh, hardware limitation of the platform, right? So the, this this application has been developed for for Oculus One, uh, so there are some kind of hardware limitation to make this uh, to make this object much more uh, better looking. I will uh, talk a little bit later on about this, but basically it's a, a pretty nice level. So uh, the wines and arteries are marked by the different color to make this a little bit easy. There are descriptions um, what particular uh, uh, wine artery or or, or, or John is, uh, there is a room for for uh, some kind of uh, extension to add, add, add much more uh, much more descriptions and so on and so on. Um, but basically, it's it's also pretty nice uh, level. And the last one, it's a school. Someone someone would say uh, I have received the feedback from community that there is still too many. Too many, uh, too many bones to to uh, to set up. The, the description are poor. Some people uh, complains that uh, there is uh, uh, some kind of confusing naming convention. Uh, so they should be in Latin or they should be in English. So we can talk a little bit about later about about, uh, for example, localization uh, depends on, on on country obviously. Uh, but basically, it's uh, it's also pretty demanding demanding level, especially if uh, when it comes to this internal uh, internal bones in in uh, in our in in a human human school medical students have a dedicated dedicated exam uh, from this including obviously much more complex stuff like you know like like connection with the face muscles and so on and so on i i know even personally person who who bought the the human real human uh, school from the grave dig diggers to just uh, learn to the exam on the, on the medical school uh, in, and virtual reality probably can help significantly to, to learn uh, such stuff um, after obviously you know making this much more uh, much more uh, details and so on but for uh, people in the uh, middle school it's, it should be good enough All right so let's go to the next slide um, improvements um, so the improvements that could be in very easy way implemented in this application are, uh, are, for example, zoom mode, right? So when it comes to zoom mode, so it means that Oculus Quest first and Oculus, even Oculus, uh, Oculus uh, Quest 2 and any other mobile platform are uh, pretty limited when it comes to hardware capabilities, right? So we cannot display the full detailed uh, uh, object with the reflections with uh, you know the wines and artery arteries uh, uh, sharply visible but we can do some kind of trick for example that's uh, if someone is assembling the uh, someone is assembling some kind of um, uh, i don't know internal organs or, or so on by just pressing the button on the controller we can just um, zoom uh, we can just disable everything um, outside including the room and just display one single object. In such case, we'll have the possibility to display much more detail. Uh, and so, so it is the one of the improvements that, that I see that we can uh, add to this application to make this much more edu educational and, and less, I would say, that less game, much more, much more application for, for educational purpose. Um, right, so we can also add, uh, uh, I also can, can add a very simple uh, tests, uh, uh, such like finding the, the bone or organ and, and, and having the, you know, some kind of, some kind of selection test to choose what kind of fun function a particular, uh, uh, particular or organ is responsible for uh, as, a, as a test uh, with some kind of summary and so on and so on. So basically there is a lot of, um, uh, there's a space for for making this, uh, I would say, more to, to gamify this more. 
uh, one of the obvious of the uh, obvious improvement is to port this to other platform like like Pico to to just uh, fulfill the photo class photo class requirements. Right. So the next next slide. Um, the next improvement that I uh, see that we can add and uh, it should work pretty well is uh, is animations, right? So um, let's wait a little bit. All right. So you see the animated object. It's not a problem to add something like this in VR. It's not a problem also to 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 find the third party models, including animations, right? And we can imagine that, for example, after uh, you know assembling, I don't know, stomach with um, uh, with intensities, right? That we, we would have self, or we, when you have the um, assembled full full digestive system system, it start to it, it it goes alive, right? By this by using this animation, so it it would make this uh, this application much even much more appealing, and you know seeing this in in the virtual reality is additional. Uh, additional experience. Uh, right, so let's move to another uh, slide. Um, okay, so Christine asked to just uh, play some kind of stats uh, uh, of this uh, of this application, right? So this is not uh, basically too popular application. Mainly, main, uh, mainly one of the reasons is that that uh, meta metaverse is not allow, uh, uh, does not allow. Um, um, uh, to have the educational application right right now on on on, uh, on the main store, but this application is available on application lab. So it is something like uh, you can you have to go direct to this application. Um, so uh, so basically, it is it is what it is. Um, but what is interesting, uh, we see that uh, I see that uh, vast majority of people who use this application are between. Uh, 25 to to 45, and this is definitely not the target we are looking for. We are looking for a dark, for a young people, uh, students, and and the primary school uh, uh, students, right? So this is uh, definitely some kind of a possibility to just uh, to just make this application much more appealing, make this application more professional, and also uh, find the the audience uh, for the young people to 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 give them the real value. Uh, right. So when it comes to nations, uh, so it is also some kind of indicator what nations are much more, I would say, uh, much more keen to use such new technologies to to just learn education. Uh, right. So so I was a little bit surprised that, that for example, Brazil or Spain are so so high on this list. Uh, okay. Um, the last slide, some kind of fun facts. Uh, so some some guy on on the side quest said that this is the he used this application as a party game. Uh, I have no idea what kind of party it was, but basically, if he had fun, um, uh, it's all right. So I, I was pretty surprised. Uh, so there is a, 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 another uh, uh, aspect that it's, it's worth to mention is that I do have right now on the male model and with, with without reproduction tracts. Right, so I have decided to not uh, place uh, any, I would say, controversial organs, right, to this to this game to not raise any kind of controversial controversies. But, but basically, if um, it depends on uh, it depends, it could be configurable uh, to have to not have you know um, to have the adult and, and not adult version of this application, uh, and and also some gap is to just uh, add the female uh, model with reproductive tract as well. Waving. This is uh, pretty interesting because um, there is a possibility to cheat in this application. If someone has no knowledge when particular org organs uh, should be matched with the other organ, which one? So the people are just starting waving the head and, and uh, the, sorry the hand, hand and uh, they are looking for this hint. And but there is there is a pretty easy way how to uh, how to uh, find this. I would say to implement such, such kind of cheat detector by just you know checking the speed of the hand. If someone is waving uh, hands too fast, it's definitely is a cheating. And in such case, uh, I can just not display the hints, right? So this is this is pretty able to um, to address. There were some questions about why room is so dark. Uh, yeah, there it, this room is pretty depressive. I would say. Is too dark uh, for many people, but it's uh, because of the limitation. So, um, if something is brighter, uh, so the the screen door effect, so this this distances between the pixels, especially in the Oculus One, are much more visible. 
uh, right, um, much more visible. That's why if there is much more um, dark colors, so it looks much more, uh, much closer to reality, right? Uh, so what's more, when it comes to rating, uh, something uh, something around uh, four out of five on uh, application app and side quest. And the good news is also that uh, this application is able to keep, uh, even if such level of details which application provides right now, um, the the frame rate, frame rate uh, above the seventy frames per se uh, per second. It is and it is crucial, right? So this is some kind of minimum value, at least uh, seventy frames per second to to feel comfortable in this VR world. Having less or have any any delays can cause some kind of side effects, uh, nausea, nausea, uh, headache, and even even vomiting, right? So. So this is the, that's why this application is a little bit simple, but in the same time, um, it's 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 safe uh, to use, right? And this is my my contact point. Uh, so Photoglass asked me to to add this as well to this presentation, right? So it's gonna be it from my side. Thank you very much, Mikal. And there's one question from Enrique, uh, probably going back to the slide screen that you had there, uh, asking that. Uh, Actually, Enrique, maybe if you're here still, can you clarify what what issue was it that your question was about? But you're saying that maybe most schools do not have VR headsets, that these numbers mostly represent home use. Uh, or maybe you... Oh, yeah. Enrique, if, if you can talk. If not, then uh, we can... Okay. Ah, with the age of users. Uh, right. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. So this is a good observation, right? So if uh, VR will be much more popular in schools, where, where, one moment, where is the stats? It's coming. Yeah. It, it, each time that this, okay, this here is, here it is. Uh, yeah, so definitely, if uh, VR will be much more present in in the schools, the statistics uh, statistic would uh, uh, look uh, look better, right, for us, right? Because right now, twenty five to forty five, it's not definitely it's out of the the learning. Uh, I would say uh, prime time, right? But it is what it is, right? Have you considered making a laptop version? I guess guess it means for the computer screen. A laptop version? Um, no, I have no, I haven't. I haven't considered. I would consider to just make this application uh, for Oculus Rift uh, to have much more sophisticated model with the more more effects, better better shaders, more details, better looking. But uh, I don't think that it's, it's a point, right? To to just uh, to just uh, have the a version a PC based version of this application, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we'll talk about and, platforms in a bit, but I think it might make sense to wait for a year or two if you want more and, to get it. And, and basically what, what I wanted to say, it is, it is this application has been made just to fulfill my own requirements. I wanted to just be in this world and to feel the scale, to see this um, how the human body is built. And um, the VR gives you the possibility to feel the scale to, to, uh, with, with this model, which is at least our height. Uh, and to uh, to see the uh, as I said particular origin with the real scale. So from my perspective, uh, you know, going back, downgrading this to, to to the I don't know phone application or smartphone application or not laptop application, there is no point. Mm -hmm. Nice. Any more questions? I'll, I'll jump in then. Um, have you tested it with any uh, like in inside schools with biology students or or? In any no, other kind of uh, I have received a lot of feedback from the people who are interested in to using of this application for educational purposes. They said that it works pretty well, but uh, what is the main drawback is the time limitation. I have decided to make this, uh, I would say, gamif gamify this version of this app. app. So, so there is a, uh, there is a time frame that you have to assemble the model. The al always the, the the setup of the models after uh, uh, on the initial step is exactly the same. To give a possibility, you have to equal equal fight with the other competitor. Um, but uh, I. Uh, have a possibility to test with the one of the medical students um, this application and you know the feedback was that it's it's a good application um, 
um, but basically some improvements are required to just make this application um, uh, on the level of the medical university, even the first first years of the of the medical universities, right? So definitely at this moment it's it's not on this level, but um, while evol evolving, while having the more powerful platforms, by while um, develop the models, you know maybe it will be possible to in future to to also achieve some kind of university level with this. Nice. Okay. I think that's it. Thank you so much, Mikhail. Thank you. It's really interesting. Um, and best of luck. I hope we'll, we'll play uh, your app lots more and learn from it in the coming years. Uh, so now it's actually my turn. I will uh, talk about the content and what's what's available. I hope you're okay with my browser being shared because I'll be popping between windows a lot. Um, so basically, I'll cover quickly what uh, uh, what educational apps are available, and just a quick uh, introduction of the reintroduction review of the platforms uh, that are, in our opinion, kind of the prevalent ones in the coming years. Um, basically, it's the six DOF or six degrees of freedom. In a way, the proper VR platforms where you actually your head and your hand is tracked in 3D space. And they should, of course, be standalone, so you don't need computers or any cables and things like that. So you can, you're free to move. And there are basically two platforms currently in the market. There are a few more, but these are the key ones. Uh, there is the MetaQuest, and we should say MetaQuest 2, uh, because one is uh, not really produced anymore. Um, and then there is Pico Neo 3 Pro. And there's likely going to be a few more in the next few years as these companies are figuring out a few technology pieces to let the standalone devices come onto the market. Uh, but this is definitely from a user convenience point of view, this is the way to go. And these headsets will get better over time and, uh, and they will also, maybe you can lose the remotes in a few years, you just do hand tracking, there's all kinds of interesting uh, uh, developments on the way that make them more um, kind of mainstream friendly. And uh, when you, if you're thinking about uh, which devices to get for your school, then you should probably think about the uh, content. Uh, there is definitely more on it on Quest, but Pico is catching up. Uh, you should think about price. Currently, Quest is uh, cheaper. Um, and you should think about the account system, which is the big drawback of Quest right now. Namely, you basically need your own Meta slash Facebook account to use it. Uh, and that is also supposedly being uh, in the works, but uh, if you're getting a big park of devices, then we would rather uh, Photoglass is basically offering Picos right now to school. And I should mention, we only started doing this because uh, schools really started asking us for a full solution. So these are some of the things to think about. Um, and also, uh, yeah, so you can, I'm sure there are also other providers, uh, but, uh, this is what uh, also we offer uh, as a full service. But mainly we're talking about software and we want to be in the software. We want to be making great educational software. And uh, we also want uh, everybody to make and consume uh, and learn through VR because it's such a superior way to learn in our many things in our opinion. So hence I'll, I'll cover this uh, update, uh, updated list of uh, VR games. And uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, I'll just scroll through the list. So there are 47 of them here. And uh, you will see uh, there, these are marked. There are also handy links. So you can get more information when you click on this uh, either Quest or Pico store links. Um, although to be more, um, to be exact, the Pico store actually doesn't have a web link. So you have to kind of look for it inside the headset when you have it, this app, and then you can download it. And this is the case for, for all the apps. But at least uh, it's listed here whether that build exists or not uh, on the Pico store. And on, on Quest as well, uh, we should mention uh, for those who don't know, there are two kinds of stores. There is the Quest store itself, like you see here, which is really uh, curated. Uh, and they usually actually don't really want directly like curriculum, curriculum aligned educational experiences. They are more interested in the kind of wow effect experiences, which can be considered educational. Uh, at least that's a stance right now. So if you want to be on international space station, that's uh, on the main store and it's actually free. Uh, whereas if you want to 
many apps uh, that uh, now you can buy on Quest are actually through the App Lab. Uh, so this is like a environment where, um, which makes distribution really easy, but uh, the discovery you have to do yourself. So you have to kind of market yourself uh, as a content producer yourself and uh, schools and the teachers will need to find your app and then look for it kind of. It's not in the main store without typing. Um, that's just a little, a little fact. Uh, so Photoglass, uh, we're first, so I'll quickly, cover how I think uh, we are uh, kind of more perhaps school focused than, uh, than some of the other apps uh, is that we really have a web environment uh, also. Uh, so first of all, we have curriculum aligned modules. There is about uh, 10 of them in chemistry, a few, a few more are coming in, uh, in physics, uh, about 15 modules right now, five in physics, 10 in chemistry. Uh, and we have, uh, a portal which uh, explains how to teach using virtual reality best practices, how to maintain the headsets, how to update things, uh, checklists for giving lessons and so on. Uh, and also we have a classes system. So this is basically a place where a teacher can view uh, during the lesson where somebody is and, and can see the information uh, where, the, where the students are at. So you can, for example, uh, go in here and you can see uh, uh, results of each student. And this enables to give feedback uh, during the lesson as well uh, by the teacher. And uh, next up we have, uh, so now I'll basically go down the list of available apps. So we have a Molecule Builder. So basically there are two chemistry apps that we know to recommend. Molecule Builder is a quite limited one where you can uh, um, do things uh, to about, I think it's like six or eight molecules. Uh, you can go into a bit more detail than, uh, than our app uh, perhaps, but only in a very limited amount of things. Uh, physics wise, uh, there is a lot of space related apps available, which uh, it is physics. It, perhaps uh, it's not that, that aligned to secondary or high school curriculum, but it's definitely exciting. Uh, as I mentioned, this, the space, uh, International Space Station app. Uh, there are apps where you can uh, travel around in, in space. A lot of them are about knowing the planet sizes, uh, seeing the faraway galaxies and really kind of being in 3D space and getting a really, uh, getting to know interesting facts about our universe in the experience. And uh, lastly, Gadgeteer here is a, is a bit of a physics-based game really. So this is for, I think, innovative teachers to uh, to figure out, uh, to teach different principles to uh, this kind of uh, Rube Goldberg machine type of mechanics. And biology, we have covered today one app, Human Anatomy Puzzle. Uh, we like it a lot because it's easy and easy to pick up and, uh, and really practical to use. Uh, there are other more pricier uh, alternatives. And these, uh, you, in general, for any teacher who is looking to um, looking to uh, see if they if VR is applicable in their classes. The best idea is to take home a headset, uh, play around with it, try out all your apps, um, and uh, join a, uh, an online group. Oculus for Education is a, is one that we can recommend. Uh, it's it's Oculus specific in a way, but it's it's largely everybody who's not everybody, but a lot of people who are excited about teaching in VR are here, and you can really get some good quality peer advice here uh, from other teachers. And also, uh, we advise you to, uh, well, I have to plug our own enterprise a bit here too. We advise you to also uh, follow Future Class in social media, uh, because we're also really, as I said before, we're really interested in, in promoting VR and education in general, all the use cases, all the good ways it can be used. And, uh, and we're just promoting the whole field and industry, whatever is useful for, for the teachers. Uh, so please uh, uh, do that. Um, all right, now heading back to the biology, there is the frog edition. So basically you can do dissection on animals as well. And there is a number more of these. Uh, it's a bit ew, but uh, it's if you're studying uh, biology and anatomy of animals, it's really useful. Now, uh, geography is a field that often gets named as, a, as an interesting one. Um, 
so ecosphere is a bit uh, it's really interesting but it's more like a movie based environment you're in 360 degree video it's good content though so it's it's worth watching uh, but we definitely find that uh, students are more engaged with interactive content uh, so wonder is basically a, a really cool google map where you can go anywhere in, in around the globe and uh, you know how google has this street map view so you're kind of in the environment and you can feel like you're there and then you can go back in time because there are these snapshots of this environment and you can see how your house or any place almost looked like five years ago or more and this is super exciting um that's just uh, one of my these favorites uh, a famous one is national geographic and that one is uh, is really good uh, the screenshot from there as well is from machu picchu uh, which you can visit and also you can visit antarctica and this is a really great interactive experience where you take pictures and in Antarctica, you kind of uh, sit in a canoe and kind of see penguins and uh, it's really memorable. Uh, Ocean Rift takes you underwater, Bring Traveler has really picturesque locations of canyons and such places around the world. And uh, Blue Planet as well is an underwater, uh, well, not necessarily underwater, but a planetary exploration app. And then we get to, uh, some mathematics related so algebra in pandemic this is a kind of a, a linear app where you learn about the principles of um, percentages and uh, and uh, i guess logarithmic calculations perhaps uh, basically built around the use case of how uh, the mathematics uh, in pandem during pandemic uh, worked so it's uh, it's explained through this uh, uh, people being kind of contaminated uh, scenarios. Uh, and uh, geometry as well, uh, Neotrees is quite advanced, but you can learn uh, uh, about different 3D ge geometrical objects here. Uh, now we go to humanities. So this is a really big field, uh, especially arts. Um, tilt brush uh, is a long time of kind of favorite uh, you're basically in 3d space and you can paint in space but uh, you can do all kinds of digital things that you couldn't do in real life uh, you can have things glow and animate and you can paint with sound and uh, and and this was actually created by google and don donated to open source so if you don't want to spend the 20 bucks for it uh, then there is open brush which is basically a free version you can get from the app lab and there is also multi brush which lets you do this in a in a group setting and you can uh, save out these works and it can really do some amazing things with tilt brush uh, but so uh, the same applies also to many others so history of a painting is actually a really interesting way to learn about painters and it's kind of a it's told you through this uh, three-dimensional storytelling mechanics so it's unlike uh, any other medium it's, it's not like watching a movie it's like you're actually inside the story um yeah so you can be inside paintings also here inside famous paintings that are created in 3d three dimensions uh, and then there are a number of really great uh, um, software where you can uh, really go full on with self-expression and you can give whole classes and it's like it's like doing the uh, it's like being a graffiti artist for example so you can see here uh, you can learn and do a lot with these. Uh, you can save this out as real uh, legit artworks. Same with painting VR. Uh, so Wim wasn't able to make it today, but there is really, uh, I recommend you to check out his app as well. There is a lot of, uh, the sensation of how your hand is like, uh, is kind of against the canvas through the controller. It's, it's like almost real with the sound and, and the art you're making. It's really beautiful. Um, and. Uh, so are the others apps for coloring. I'd still uh, highlight here the sculpturing app, Sculptor, Sculptor ER and Gravity Sketch, which is really great for uh, more serious minded industrial designers and so on, because uh, you can create some uh, concepts in 3D very easily. Uh, and Shape 6R is slightly uh, is similar. Uh, you can use this to create uh, quick mock-ups and it's kind of like, it's almost like a Figma or, or some kind of tool like this, uh, but in, in three dimensions where you can uh, prototype your uh, idea of, uh, of a 3D space quite easily. 
And now history and storytelling is also where virtual reality shines. Um, a lot of this experience uh, can be free as well. A few highlighted here is uh, Anne Frank House VR. Uh, that's his uh, house in uh, Holland, I believe. And it's a really beautifully told and masterfully executed story. Uh, you can get to know the history and really explore the place as if you were there. Uh, another highlight here is Apollo 11, uh, which is basically the first uh, moon flying mission uh, produced with original audio. And there's a lot of uh, amazing scenes here. And basically in half an hour, you feel like you have visited the moon uh, with, the, with the people who did it first. Uh, very special. Uh, language learning, speech. Um, so Mondly is a famous language learning app, and you can basically, they produce, they support 30 languages now, which is really crazy because it actually works. And you are uh, in real life situations. Uh, it's basically like you would ideally want to learn a language uh, in a strange country. Uh, and you're ordering food, you're checking into a hotel, riding a taxi, all these things you're doing. And uh, it actually works in every language. So really uh, well made as well. Uh, just language lab call out because uh, uh, it's an app where you are learning the language without actually using any words for it like a kid would so it's still in development but i thought it's a really interesting concept and kind of shows you the potential of what virtual reality can be by just putting you into a, another experience uh, virtual speech trains public speaking really important um, aspect and really works super well. You're in front of a hall with 100 people, half of them are, not half, but many of them are like asleep, coughing, checking their phone, your slides are out. It feels like the real thing and can really train you in public speaking very effectively. And music, lots of fascinating uh, apps here as well. Uh, Virtuoso is probably the most, uh, uh, the deepest of them and yet uh, easy to pick up. And you can do all kinds of, uh, uh, also, the creative canvas is almost infinite because you have, first of all, the spatial canvas around you where you can place all the instruments and things you want to use, and then you can create uh, songs and so on with, uh, with almost infinite amount of instruments. Uh, percussive is focused more on uh, percussions, uh, instruments, um, and there's uh, also the piano teaching uh, uh, app here, Virtuous, which yeah, I'll show quickly. So this is basically you can overlay this to, on top of a real piano, and you and you get uh, you get to practice. All right, almost end of the list here. Uh, notes and blindness. Uh, so social studies and this uh, giving you a sense of being someone else is a really powerful uh, um, trait of virtual reality. Uh, feeling like you're going blind is is it's like a story about a man who went blind a while ago, and is. Uh, He's documenting the process and it's been created into this uh, beautiful experience. Um, and you can uh, see the other uh, by the names already. You can imagine what it's, uh, well, you can't imagine, but you can experience what it might be like to be a black person in the 60s uh, in the southern US. Um, and I'm sure there are many other apps of, um, of this uh, kind of social uh, education. And a lot of them also in Within, which is a free portal of 360 degree experiences uh, also available for free in the Quest Store. And lastly, wrapping up, uh, there's a number of online spaces where uh, teachers and students can meet, uh, give classes. Uh, they have different educational uses. You can uh, prepare, draw in presentations, models. Uh, you can also do meetings. Uh, it's a little bit, uh, it's related to education. Um, but these also can be used as just meeting spaces in general. And I thought I'd include a few here in this list. And lastly, there's a brain training app. So if you come in every day, you play certain kinds of uh, games. Uh, they will uh, keep your brain more active, supposedly. Um, this is a category of, of, of games that's been around on, on many other medium as well. Uh, yes, so this is, uh, this is the summary. I hope uh, this is useful, interesting. Uh, you can find this article at our uh, Fruit of Class blog. You just put educational VR games in. We will be updating it regularly. Um, really, uh, I hope the, the content on these uh, headsets, uh, that there will be more and more of it every year. 
that the teachers can find uh, all the fantastic ways how it can enhance their lessons and uh, and education given. And uh, yeah, again, I advise you can follow us in uh, on, on Facebook or uh, definitely join the Oculus for Education group uh, to see what others are doing uh, and, and get answers to your questions. And then most definitely, please, uh, with any questions at all, uh, feel free to get in touch with me or, or Kristen who organized this, this webinar. And we actually have 80 people signed up today. So there will be people uh, watching this on video as well. Now, uh, I, I have the chance to ask, does anybody have questions? Because I'll stop the screen share. Uh -huh. So there is a question uh, called, is it possible to use this content with the mobile device with Google Cardboard? The answer, unfortunately, uh, this particular ones that I showed, the answer is no. Um, it's just a technical thing that, uh, yeah, the, the platforms uh, are, have evolved a lot since Google Cardboard um, and the current mobile phones are just not purpose designed for that anymore. And the experience would be uh, inferior. Hence the answer, unfortunately, is no. Um, I think mobile devices will probably have their second coming when the really augmented reality classes will come to the market one day but that's still years away so so yeah unfortunately no thank you uh, so pavel wrote the paper about market analysis of educational labs uh, very interesting we'll go check that out later if you have anything you want to highlight from there or that relates to what i was talking about uh, that's great um, Uh, is it possible to purchase self photoglass VR content and use it in commercial purposes? Uh, yeah, I think uh, Kristen is a, um, yeah. So basically, yes, is the answer. Uh, we actually, like this, it's not meant to be, since you're asking, I, I have to answer. Uh, uh, photoglass is available as a subscription for schools. Uh, and also we are, uh, happy to partner with any resellers, distributors who already have existing school relationships um, and who are willing to uh, provide our content. Uh, it's been tested, it works really well in the places where we have used it. So we're, uh, we're excited to kind of scale it up to, to more schools and then talk to everybody who's interested. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, thank you very much, Ethiram. Um, yeah, and, uh, thank you. Thank you for your answers. Okay, I think uh, I think we're wrapping up then. Uh, again, thank you. Uh, let us know if you have any questions. I hope this was informative, and uh, let's be in touch and uh, build the better, build better experiences for education and virtual reality. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very useful, productive, and interesting. Thank Excellent. You. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.